Thank you so much for joining us, Allison. Oh. Um, can you give me a little bit of background on stupid cancer? Sure, absolutely. So stupid cancer is the leader in adolescent and young adult cancer education and support. Our mission is to empower AYAs affected by cancer by ending isolation and building community. And we do that through our innovative programming. Um, we offer a lifeline to the AYA community by connecting them to age appropriate resources. We have a variety of online and in-person programming. Obviously, the in-person programming is on hold for the time being, but um, we, we've been able to very successfully pivot to the virtual space because of the programming that we've done um, in the past. We have meetups that we host every Monday evening for the community, and these are just casual social gatherings to bring together adolescents and young adults. Um, in this current public health crisis, we've started adding a few more to increase those connections. Uh, we also have an annual conference called CancerCon. Uh, it's the largest gathering of the AYA community, and is, it is a weekend-long um, event where folks can come together for social activities, for workshops, for education, for connections. It was actually scheduled for next week in Seattle, which has since been canceled. Um, but we are going virtual in the beginning of June and announcing that date in just a few days. So we're very excited about that. We also have, we host um, webinars regularly and these are interactive educational sessions hosted by experts that focus on those issues that are really important to the AYA community. And of course we have a huge social media following and we really use social media as a way to connect with our folks, with the community to connect to one another, as well as share information and resources with folks. That's great. That kind of ties into, um, right now it, we're in the middle of um, AYA Cancer Week. So that started on April so what does that really entail for you guys? Uh, so AYA Week is, is, uh, has been going on for the past few years. It is an awareness week. Um, and the goal of this week is to raise awareness about the unique challenges of adolescents and young adults um, who, are, who are impacted by cancer. And it's a collaborative effort among several different nonprofits across the country that focus on this specific population. Um, every day this week, we've been posting information for the community to share and react to. And we really hope this is an opportunity for us to reach beyond the AYA community and shed some light on this underserved population. That's great. So kind of tying in with that, what are some of the unique challenges um, that you're seeing right now faced by the adolescent young adult cancer community, um, particularly due to the whole COVID-19 pandemic? Sure, sure. Um, it, it's a new era for a lot of us. And so we're learning a lot, you know, day by day. Um, we do know that cancer is the number one disease killer among AYAs and that the incidence rates in the adolescent and young adult community has increased more than in any other age group while survival rates have not improved. Um, delayed diagnosis is disproportionately higher among young adults and um, with more difficult access to our doctors and the healthcare system at this point where we are concerned that that might continue to worsen over time. Um, compounding this, the AYA community faces additional unique challenges due to their, uh, to their cancer during this critical time in their lives, both personal and professional. Uh, this population reports higher rates of bankruptcy, um, we see that they often forego medical treatment because of the cost of cancer care. They face financial distress exacerbated by non-medical costs like child care, um, student loans, mortgages, um, concerns about fertility. And we see that even in survivorship, they report poor health, poor health outcomes, including high risks of obesity, heart disease, depression, anxiety. Um, and all of that we certainly see exacerbated by the current public health crisis. Uh, most notably, uh, we are seeing these feelings of isolation and anxiety increasing among the community. Um, with so many of us under shelter in place mandates, um, practicing social distancing, and especially within an immune, immunocompromised community, um, we're very concerned that this idea of isolation is, is only getting worse. Um, increased anxiety leading to insomnia, depression, um, these are all kind of the issues that our community is, is faced with. 
Um, on top of that, there is the constantly evolving information and the outstanding questions that are, that are happening every day. There's something new that we're learning about this disease. And, and while it's wonderful that, that the science is progressing so quickly, um, it does leave a lot of questions for, for our community for how they can react, what they should be doing, and how does this most importantly impact their treatment, um, whether they are having uh, treatment delayed, whether they're having treatment canceled, um, or having to revert to telemedicine and how to use telemedicine in cancer care. There are a lot of questions that, that are really um, adding stress to uh, an already very stressed community. Yeah. So uh, kind of along those lines, when you mentioned the, the whole social isolation thing, many hospitals are banning visitors uh, and limiting the amount of people who are coming and going um, to try to flatten the curve. So how can AYAs find comfort if they're facing their daily treatment or even hospital stays alone? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've always said, you know, don't go in this alone and bring somebody with you and, um, and have somebody to, to talk to you and, and help, you know, understand what's going on. And obviously now that's not as possible in many, many places in many cities. Um, so we are encouraging folks to uh, use the digital space in a way that can help them connect to help reduce anxiety, to help build connections and build community. Um, like I said earlier, we are ramping up our digital meetups. So there are opportunities for folks to continue to connect, whether it's through the weekly ones on Monday or just kind of a fun social activity online. Um, you know, we want people to be safe. We certainly encourage the social distancing um, and we encourage them to reach out to folks. Uh, you know, if it's, whether it's an inpatient and kind of using the digital space to connect online or if you're just going in for a daily treatment, um, coming home and, and, and talking about that. Um, we don't want people to neglect their mental health, especially right now. Yeah. So, Overall, your goal uh, is to end isolation and build community in the AYA cancer community. That's Stupid Cancer's you know, mission. What initiatives is the organization working on right now to help achieve that goal? You mentioned the you know, digital properties kind of, what else is happening? So we are really ramping up our educational offerings um, through our webinars. Um, to make sure that as the research on the information evolves, that we are sharing that with our community, both um, through the webinars and of course through our social media. We have uh, such a, a robust social media um, contingent. It's really a great way for us to be able to share with them as well as um, collect information from them to understand what are your biggest concerns right now? How is that changing um, and how can the how can stupid cancer and how can the AYA community as a whole respond to help support you through this difficult time? Um, we have actually been working with um, five other uh, nonprofits as well as a few um, healthcare professionals that focus on the AYA space to build a website that will be launched shortly that is uh, a collection of all of this kind of information and resources. And our goal is to be able to provide some really solid, reliable evidence-based information in a kind of one-stop shopping um, for the community. So, so they can help, uh, so we can help them, you know, through this time um, and make sure that they're getting some good information from people and not just kind of everything that's out there on the website or on the internet. Uh, we do encourage people to, you know, when looking for answers, to go to some of those reliable websites like the CDC and NIH um, and, and any sort of trusted organization that you work with. Um, and Stupid Cancer is certainly there to help. That's great. So lastly, do you have any advice for patients, survivors, even caregivers um, who might be concerned about how to handle the pandemic right now? Well, first and foremost, I would say stay healthy um, and listen to what your doctors are telling you. Um, talk to your healthcare team about the challenges that you're having and the concerns that you have. Uh, we know that the guidelines around specific cancers are and the treatments for those cancers are changing. And um, so really understanding what those are and, and working with your team to understand how that impacts you. Um, but we certainly want people to stay connected. It's so critical in this time to not neglect your mental health and um, to find good, reliable resources to, to stay connected. Um, we recently did a webinar uh, 
a few weeks ago with an infectious disease specialist on how COVID impacts the AYA community. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of good answers in there that people can turn to, but certainly, you know, use your Zoom accounts and use your phone and use your texting. And, and um, it's really important now more than ever to make those connections and, and um, connect with, with family and friends uh, as we're all kind of sheltered in place for, for what seems like the next few weeks at least. That's great. Well, thank you for joining us today, Allison. Thank you so much. It was great speaking with you.